And so you should elect how you want to live. Controlled by your mind, your thoughts, and your flesh. Or controlled, guided, and directed by the Holy Spirit. Good morning, I am Pastor Carlos Rios, and this is our devotional mana, a daily adventure with God. What choice do we want to make this year, 2024? Do we want to live a life filled with the Holy Spirit, or do we want to live in the flesh? This is a decision, and Christian life is a life of decisions. And each day, we must make decisions according to what we learn and we live in God's Word. We must make decisions. Look at what Scripture says when Scripture speaks in Romans chapter 8, verses 8 through 9. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of God, they do not belong to Christ. And verse 8 begins with saying, Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. So notice that here the Apostle Paul is saying that there are two ways of living. The first way of living is in the flesh. Remember that in the Garden of Eden, there was something left for us, an inheritance. And that is to live our life independent from God, apart from God. What does it mean in the Bible to live according to the flesh? Well, it is to live according to traditions, to upbringing, to what the people, to what people think, what the world thinks. And that's what it is. While the Bible says that there is another way to live, and that is filled with the Spirit, guided by the Spirit, where we take into account God, His Word, and His commandments. This is why when we talk about cultivating a spiritual life, we are asking, what are you cultivating the most? Do you nourish your life in the flesh, or do you nourish your life filled with the Holy Spirit? Let's go back to Romans 8 where we were reading, and read what it says in verses 5 and 6. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. Verse 6, The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life. And further ahead it says, You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. So once again, those who live according to the flesh. And who are those who live according to the flesh? Well, those who have their mindset on what the flesh desires. Others whose mind is governed by the flesh. And so there are three things here. Once again, those who live according to the flesh, those who have their minds set on what the flesh desires, and those whose minds are governed by the flesh. And so... Testing yourself is very easy. What do you think about the most? What occupies your time? What do you live for? And according to this, beginning today, you can say, well, the truth is I need to examine my life and analyze if I am truly being controlled by this or is there truly a different way to live? So in these very words, we find the answer. Those who think on the things of the, of the Spirit, those who are concerned with the things of the Spirit, or who occupy themselves with the thing of the Spirit and those who live in the things of the Spirit. And so this is very interesting to say, why don't we analyze our daily lives and decide what we live for? What do I want to continue doing and what, how do I want to be controlled, governed, and directed? But what I must tell you is that we cannot do both. We cannot do one thing one day and something else the next or the other the next day. Because truly, in my daily living, I have to decide what do I think about, what do I occupy my time with, and what I live for. Do I live for the things of the flesh? And according to this text, it is very clear. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Look at what it says. First, it says that it is death. Then, it, is, it says that it is hostile against God. And thirdly, it says that they cannot please God. And so the question is, what do you want for this new year? What do you want for your new lifestyle? Do you want to continue living the same way? Do you want to continue living against God's will, knowing that it brings death? Do you want to live against God's will, knowing that that is hostile against Him and that cannot please Him? Or do we go back to what the Bible is saying? 
that the mind governed by the spirit is life, not death, that it brings peace and that those who live according to God, to God's will can live for his glory and his honor. Let's go to Galatians and Galatians will expand on this. Galatians chapter five. In Galatians chapter five proposes two very interesting things that I want us to review today. So once again, Galatians is saying, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. I have a choice, two choices, to walk in the Spirit or to live as I have always lived, as everyone else lives. Verse 17, For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. Now, there are two lists that I find extremely interesting, and you can identify yourselves in one of these lists. Look at what Paul is telling us here. Verse 19, the acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of the rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. So this is the list. And so there is no confusion here. Based on this list, we know if we are governed by the flesh or if we are governed by the spirit. And we must be clear here because I meet people that tell me, well, Pastor, I do not commit these horrendous sins or crimes such as murder or rape. But are we living in idolatry, in jealousy, in selfishness, in drunkenness and the like? And so, my dear family, this is where I must identify, think about this. What type of life are we leading? And so, this leads us to the conclusion that we must understand. Are we living a spiritual life? Are we cultivating a spiritual life? And in turn, look at the list that the Apostle Paul gives us in verse 22. He says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Look at how different these lists are. Those who are governed by a, style, a lifestyle governed by the flesh, based on what the world thinks. Those who are guided, governed, and directed by the Holy Spirit. So what are the deeds of one and what are the deeds of the other? How I love how this Galatians 5.25 ends. It says, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. And so what should this be? It should be a lifestyle. And so what is this telling us? It is telling us the first thing we must do this morning as we listen to God's word is number one, meditate on our ways. And it isn't difficult in the light of the passages we just read. It is not difficult at all to see where I am, who governs and directs my life. And so what does it mean to be governed by my flesh, by my old being, to now be governed by God's spirit? I am not telling you that life becomes perfect, that we no longer make mistakes, or that we no longer sin. Of course not. But what I do want to tell you is that in this new governing, in this new direction, in this new path, we do remove many weights, many loads, and experience healing, restoration, a new life. Here we can now say that I am that we are living a new life in Christ Jesus. Now I may say that I am a Christian, a son, a daughter of God. Because God is carrying out a work of transformation, of healing, of restoration. But what was to happen? Because we have been talking about the spiritual area the entire week, about our spiritual life, of cultivating a spiritual life. Here comes the point. For you to change the works of the flesh and begin to live the fruit of the spirit, there has to be a dedication for this to happen. There must be commitment. There has to be compromise that we must take the steps. For example, if you have not taken the step of joining a church, join a church where you will meet pastors, elders, people that can help you, that can counsel you. Number two, you will find that if you join Bible study or a course of spiritual formation and there allow God's word to do something inside of you, because when you allow God's word to penetrate in your life, no longer just reading it every now and then, but in the study, continuously, permanently, you will find that your thoughts and your mind changes. You begin to speak differently. You begin to act differently. And why? Because now you are cultivating habits that are spiritual, that will bring total change in your life. Change doesn't happen from one day to the next. 
and change doesn't happen when we do exactly the same. We must make adjustments. This is why we have given you tools so when you go to create your life plan for the year 2024, you can sit down and say, well, the pastor has given me some tools and recommendations that I must take into account so that my spiritual life truly has an adjustment, has a change, so that my spiritual life can truly experience the results that I want to occur in my life. I am sure, my dear family, that what we have studied this week will be something very relevant for your life. I am sure that the Holy Spirit has spoken to you, and I know that He will lead you to make the decision to be more spiritual people, to be more dedicated to God, more committed to Him, and especially more consistent and disciplined. Because perhaps this is what the Church of the Lord is lacking. Discipline, consistency, permanence. And perhaps this is why many have found in our devotional mana a source of blessing. Because this devotional mana accompanies you, accompanies you every day. And because we are here each day, we remain listening, consistent. And so do you see, use all the tools that we have given you in the spiritual area. Seek God early in the morning. Develop habits of a devotional life early in the morning before going to work, before carrying out any activities. Take the Bible as your spiritual nourishment daily. Have an agenda. Take notes. So do not just listen to the devotional, but write down. Take notes. Approach the Bible. Get involved in Bible study in a formation course that will lead you to grow and to mature in the path of faith. All these tools, all these disciplines will produce in you great changes. And in time, you will tell me, wow, pastor, what a great change my life has taken. I began to see financial changes in my life, in my relationship, in my interactions, in my health. Because when you truly make adjustments in the spiritual, everything changes, total changes. Perhaps we are making decisions, but in the wrong areas, in the wrong things, we must make adjustments in the right things. And I'm grateful to God. And I know that you, you will achieve it. You'll be more spiritual people, more dedicated to God. Father, thank you for this morning, for the beginning of this new day. And for each listener of Mana, it brings great joy in my heart to know that these people who are listening to us today will be more spiritual each day. That in the light of what we have studied today, they are making the decision to no longer live in the flesh, no longer thinking, occupying themselves and living for the things of the flesh thinking, occupying themselves, being concerned with the things of the Spirit, allowing their lives to be controlled by God and though His Word, and not by their thoughts, their feelings, or their past life. Lord, we have truly understood the priority, the need to occupy ourselves with our spiritual life, and this is what we will do. Thank you for your Holy Spirit amongst us, and for carrying out miracles in this change and transformation of life. In Christ Jesus, amen and amen, and I await for you tomorrow in our Friday of prayer in Mana. Blessings to all.